Hey guys, what is up? Z-Killer from Z-Killer's Life. Today we're going to be doing a bedroom, animal room tour. Uh, so, let's get right into it, shall we? So, first up, we're going to just do a kind of pan around the room. So, we've got tanks, tanks, bed, tanks, door, more tanks, more plants, posters. And I think we're going to start off with this guy. So, this is Abby. He is my cockatiel. He's about two years old. Um, he's kind of in the teenage stage where he's a little ornery most of the time, um, but he's usually a very sweet bird. Um, <laughs> he's just a little nippy lately. Um, when there's other people around, he's great, though, because he's a giant show-off and likes to be sweet with new people. Hey, stop it. Um, he's a really great bird, um, super friendly, super sweet. Um, he's just kind of ornery during the t uh, lately just because he is going into his teenage years. And it is spring, so it is breeding season for them. And as you can see, he's a little grumpy about all that. <laughs> but once I take him out for a little bit, he usually is very calm and very sweet. And I don't know why he's nipping me so much. But uh, So he's got a pretty simple cage. Um, but I mean, I take him basically everywhere I go when I'm out in the house. And he has a little place set above the bed that he likes to hang out on. And I usually let him walk around on the floor and climb all over his cage. Usually I leave the door open. Um, while I'm in here. And he's got a bell, food, water dish, everything he needs, but a really sweet little bird. Um, so I got him when he was about four months old, um, so just kind of weaning, basically. I mean, he still, ha he still didn't have all his adult plumage when I got him, um, so he's a really great bird. I like him a lot. So if we pan over to here... Uh, this is my African bullfrog tank. Um, he recently just got a new tank. He was in a uh, smaller tank uh, for a while. I've had him for a couple months now. I got him as a little baby. There he is there. Um, I'm hoping that I moved him into this <laughs> bigger tank. He'll put on some more size, and he's just always eating, as you can see by him nipping at my fingers. <laughs> Very funny little frog. Um... It's a pretty simple setup. Uh, I've got a couple live plants in there. Uh, I got these uh, elephant ears. I like these ones. These are called uh, Moonlight or something. Uh, so they've got a really white color to them. Uh, but I just freshly redid this cage. Um, but he seems to be enjoying it. Water dish, uh, pea and moss kind of mix. And uh, he seems to be enjoying it. I also got a light on him. It's mainly just kind of to keep the not really for anything else other than the plants. I mean, he doesn't need the temperature um, because it is about 80 degrees in here. Uh, but yeah, it's doing good. Uh, down here, I've got some prickly stick insect eggs incubating. Um, hopefully they'll be hatching in the next month or so. Uh, they were from my old uh, walking sticks. Uh, I don't know if they're viable because it has been quite a while uh, since I had those, but I'm hoping that they will hatch, so fingers crossed, because this is exactly how I hatched them last time, so we will see. And over here, we've got my beautiful Thai silk uh, female uh, flower horn named Bubbles. Uh, she's a super cool little fish. I like her a lot. Um, she's in a 40-gallon breeder tank right now. Um, which is the same size tank that the person who had her before me had her in, and she's just done phenomenal. Um, and uh, there's also a super red bristlenose pleco down there. Um, she tends to terrorize it, so it kind of stays hidden most of the time. Um, pretty simple tank. Um, I'm hoping to uh, get a 75-gallon um, set up for her, and I'm hoping to get a male to breed her with. Um, because the females of flower horns don't usually that have that big of a head hump, but she is a proven female. The guy who had her before, uh, he did have her lay eggs before because he had her in a tank with a bunch of other flower horns and other fish, which I thought was a little weird, but, I mean, the fish were doing amazing, so, you know, what can you say? Um, I love her red eyes, these deep color eyes. Um, feeding her this um, Okiko diet stuff, um, which is uh, kind of the best stuff for flower horns, and that's why she looks so beautiful and has that amazing head hump on her. Um, I love flower horns. I've been wanting to get one for years. Um, I got her last year. <laughs> They're just super interactive fish. Um, they've got great personalities. She has this bad habit of um, picking up sand and then uh, spitting it into the filter, though. 
and uh, breaking the filter all the time, which I do not appreciate. But <laughs> uh, she's a super fun fish. Um, I also feed her some bloodworms and some pieces of tilapia and uh, crickets occasionally. She loves crickets. She goes absolutely insane for those. Uh, but yeah, that's Bubbles, my uh, female Thai silk flower horn. So, all right. And if we go down to this window, we've got uh, my ZZ plant. Had this thing for about three years now. I just got it as one single little bulb um, that I got saved it from Walmart. It was basically dying when I got it. Um, but you can see these older leaves are starting to yellow and die out. I'm thinking I might need to fertilize this soon. Although ZZ plants are basically the easiest plants you can take care of. And then over here I've got some mounted bugs and a poster a picture. Get over to the other window. Got a bunch of plants here. Um, some random seedlings that I got for seed. I got some seeds for Christmas, and I have no idea what they were because um, my family member bought them off Amazon from uh, China, and basically had no description. They just thought the plants from the picture looked pretty, but they were photoshopped. So I'm just kind of interested to see what happens with those. Uh, same thing for this little plant here. Um, right here, I have some just dorstenias. I got three different dorstenias in here. I'll be uh, repotting those soon. Um, I'll be doing a video on Dorstenias sometime because they're an amazing plant. They're absolutely beautiful, uh, but there's like no information on here, uh, on, out on the internet about them. Um, here's my Venus flytrap, which is doing very, very poorly. Um, I'm not sure why it was doing amazing and then just decided to stop. Um, here we have a Saracena, which is putting out a ton of new growth with the spring. And then my, Dors uh, my Drosea which is uh, about to flower, which is really cool. And then <laughs> this is the rest of the elephant ear. I just took a couple pieces from it and stuck it in with the frog, and it's doing okay. And then a um, little cactus cutting bin and a uh, goldfish plant. Then I got this um, dendronium orchid, um, which is doing amazing. I, I don't know what to say. I've tried keeping phalaenopsis orchids tons of times, and they've just never done good for me. But I'll get these exotic or orchids. Like, I've had this thing for almost two years now, and it's setting out new growth right now as we speak. And it's been doing amazing. It's flowered for me several times. Um, and I have another orchid out in the shop that's also a pretty rare one, and that one does amazing as well, so don't know what to say. Um, it's got a little Talancia just sitting right there. Um, kangaroo paw uh, fern, uh, which isn't looking super hot, but been kind of moved around the house and my mom got tired of it by the window downstairs so she gave it uh had me put it back in my room we get over to this tank this used to be my pea puffer tank um unfortunately something went wrong with the water quality and my pea puffers um unfortunately did not make it because they are sensitive fish um but at the pet store that i go to um unfortunately their fish guy was leaving and he just had a ton of these uh convict cichlid babies and uh so he just gave me three of them for free um obviously one is growing a lot faster than the others um there should be three in here there's the second one the the and the other one's a bit larger than than the that smallest one there but um he's just a terror <laughs> obviously i'll be moving them into a bigger tank uh as they grow um probably be separating out that 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 guy right there pretty soon um, I've wanted to keep convict cichlids, um, I think this one's a male and I'll probably get a female to breed with him, uh, obviously a different one because these ones are related, and I'll, uh, get a nice, uh, 40 gallon set up for him and have a nice breeder tank for the convict cichlids. Uh, I got a nice little plant growing in the filtration system and some lobelias and things like that. And as we move down here, we've got my, um, 10 gallon communal beta tank. Um, a lot of people are pretty controversial over me keeping this tank, but I personally have never had any problems, and personally I believe that female betas and male betas uh, do better together. So I've got two female betas in here. I've got that white and uh, blue one. Sorry, there's a bit of glare on the glass. I'll try to uh, take care of that. Oh, I can't. All right, but uh, then I got a male crown tail in there, and I mean, I've had them in here for almost a year now and never had any problems. Um, got three neon tetras, um, four cherry barbs, and five um, ember tetras. That's right. 
Uh, and then some panda quarries. You can see there's one back there. There's two of those. And then I think I have a coolie loach in there as well. And uh, I mean, yeah, I would say this tank's a bit overstocked and I want to upgrade it to a 20 gallon. But I mean, the water quality in it is great and I do water changes. I keep up on everything. I mean, I'm starting to get a little bit of algae buildup and I'm going to get some snails to take care of that. Um, I'll probably move the loach into my 55 gallon um, just because if I put a snail in there, the loach will eat it. <laughs> so yeah, and it's got some plants in here. Um, that banana plant is not doing so hot. I don't think it's ever going to recover. Uh, I got it kind of the same way it looks now. Grew some leaves and then it kind of just died back. I don't know if they go through a dormant stage or what's going on there. But some marimo balls and my favorite, the java fern back there, which is doing amazing. Uh, it's just growing like crazy. Um, so very good. And then over at the bugs, the bugs. So here we have my uh, Posiliothera regalis tank. Um, I just did a video. I just rehoused her. Um, so she's hiding back in that log back there. Um, so I'm not going to pull her back out because I probably stressed her now enough uh, by putting her in here. Um, and then the other tarantula I have in here is my Lassiodora parahybana. Uh, this is my big girl duchess. Uh, she's about, I want to say about two years old. Um, she is just huge. She's about, uh, I'd say about an eight inch uh, size right now. And she's in pre-molt right now. Uh, so she'll be growing a bit bigger here shortly and she's a uh, she's usually very calm um, I mean this is the tarantula I pull out for people to hold all the time she's very very calm usually uh, she might flick hairs occasionally but she's never threat postured me or anything like that and as I say that she kind of does that <laughs> um, but usually she's a really calm tarantula and I usually get her out a lot kind of a small setup for her I am going to be moving her into a uh, 20 gallon uh, pretty soon. Uh, this is a five gallon. So as you can see, it's a little cramped for her, um, especially after she molts. It's definitely going to be a lot more cramped. But I mean, she's been in here ever since I got her when she was just a sling about that big. So I mean, she's doing good. All right. And then the true, spy, uh, true spider I have in here. I mean, this isn't a very glorious setup or anything, but it works. <laughs> so this is a golden huntsman spider. Um, I'm not sure the scientific name. I think the genus starts with an O and then their species is Helios or something. Um, but she's still pretty small. They get a lot bigger than this. <laughs> um, and I caught her down in southern Utah, Lake Powell area actually. Um, this is probably one of my favorite true spiders I've ever kept. She's really, I mean, she's really calm, um, especially for a um, huntsman spider. Uh, I'm not really worried about her biting me. Um, and then she's got that beautiful gold color to her. Very cool spider for sure. And I'm going to try to put her back real quick. Hold on. And I got her back on her cage. No problem. It's just going to kind of scooch her back in there. <laughs> Hoping to go down to southern Utah later this summer and uh, find a male for her. Um, hopefully be able to breed them because that would be really cool to get these guys in the hobby. I mean, they are in the hobby, but nobody actively captive breeds them, as far as I know. And then right here, we've got our first scorpion. So, I'm not a huge fan of Asian forest scorpions, and but I've kept them a lot in the past. I used to have a... Um, 20 gallon long communal with like six adults in there and I was just producing babies all the time and I just literally had to give them away because um, they're just so common. Um, but I saw this guy at the pet store, he was $3 for this little guy and I was like, eh, I'll get him. Um, one thing I love about Asian forests is they're very feisty. <laughs> you can see even this tiny guy is just rearing to go. Uh, he is in pre-molt, you can see he is very swollen. Um, but he is ready to go, <laughs> no matter though. Uh, so I got it pretty hum humid in there right now, uh, just for when he molts. Uh, definitely gonna be moving him to a different container once he gets bigger. I'll be... <laughs> he likes to chitter. Right here, we have my black top desert hairy scorpion. Um, this is my female. I used to have a um, male in here as well. 
Uh, he passed away a couple months ago, and I'm hoping he uh, bred the female. Um, she's looking very swollen lately, so I'm hoping that she is gravid, and uh, hopefully I'll have some little baby scorpions in the next couple days. Or months or weeks, I don't know. Uh, scorpion gestation period is a lot longer than most people think, but yeah. So she's a really cool scorpion, kind of handleable, um, don't really handle her much, uh, just because I don't want to stress her out, especially if she's uh, expecting. Uh, here's my um, Vietnamese giant centipede uh, cage. There's her tail right there. Uh, she is the largest Vietnamese centipede I've ever had. And I know she's female because she did lay eggs once. Um, so I'm assuming she was wild caught. Unfortunately, she did eat those eggs um, just because I was so concerned about her eating the eggs. I didn't want to uh, <laughs> uh, miss her or anything because I was afraid she would eat the eggs. But unfortunately, the humidity got too low and then she ate her eggs. So yeah. <laughs> but very cool centipede. Uh, actually, she's very calm, too. Um, a lot of people say invertebrates don't really have a personality. Um, I don't believe that because I got my Lassiador Perhabana. She's very calm. She's very calm, my Pyrigallus. And uh, she's very calm. Actually, I have a video of me handling her on my channel. Um, just a really kind of calm centipede. I've kept several Vietnamese centipedes, and so I know that she is just calm for some reason. Which is nice, of course. She eats like a champ, though. I will do a feeding video um, sometime soon. Then in here, we have my pair of... Oh, where are they? My pair of emperor scorpions. Oh, there they are. So this is a pair um, that I sexed. Um, they're still pretty small, as you can see. Um, so they got a lot of growing to do before they're able to breed. Um, these were captive bred. Um, it is impossible to get them imported into the U.S. And when that first happened, uh, their prices skyrocketed. And, uh, I mean, I saw some going for hundreds of dollars a piece uh, at pet stores. Uh, the local pet store that I go to was selling these guys for $50 a piece. Um, these were, I'm going to say these are maybe a year old. Um... And uh, they weren't selling very well, so I was looking at them, and the owner said, uh, I'll give you a good deal for those. I was like, well, if I get one, I have to get two. I can't just get the one. And he's like, all right, I'll do two for the price of one. So I got two for $50. Um, I sexed them out, and yeah, so I got those two. Um, they're doing really good, eating like champs, and hopefully they will get bigger because they're kind of small and unimpressive at the moment. But I love Emperor Scorpions. I've kept a lot in the past, um, especially when they were cheaper. Um, but yeah. Then the rest of the wall, we've kind of got, got two giant things of molts, some soil, just in case I want to add some soil to the tanks or something when I'm cleaning out mold or something. Uh, a whole bunch of collectibles, some wet specimen stuff, some skulls, different things, my rock collection. Um, I've got a pretty decent sized collection. This is kind of just my display stuff. Um, if you guys ever wanted to see a video of me doing a kind of video on uh, rocks, let me know. Um, I'd definitely be happy to do that. Again, more collecting stuff. I'm kind of a hoarder when it comes to that stuff. And then the last kind of area we have over here, this is my um, chorus frog tank, or my chorus frog vivarium. I used to have some a, uh, some morning geckos in here. Um, I've ha had those for a couple of years, and they just kind of passed away over time. And uh, uh, now I've got chorus frogs in here, which I like to consider them like the poor man's dart frog because, I mean, they're a native species to where I live, um, and they have... A great singing and they're just so so tiny my favorite thing about them is they're so loud but they're just the tiniest tiniest little frogs here I'll try to grab one here but these guys are really cool because oh sorry you can't see anything because they will take down crickets the same size as them so you don't really need to worry about um, oh there he goes <laughs> worry about things like oh there's another one there so I've got three, in, I mean, sorry, worry about things like fruit flies and things like that. Um, this is a bioactive tank. Um, there's springtails and everything going on in here. Uh, a lot of mismatch of plants and stuff. Uh, plenty of hiding spots, and they've just been doing phenomenal. Um, 
I mean, got a male and two females in here. Um, I don't think they'll ever breed, uh, just because they're kind of a seasonal breeder, and uh, yeah, they don't really get that seasonal change here in the in here. But I mean, they do amazing in this tropical setup. You can see one of them right there. I think they've got great colors. Um, during the uh, springtime, they get really green. Um, they kind of do a little bit of a color change. Um, the females are a bit bigger than the males. Um, and then during the night, the male does sing a lot. And, uh, well, within this glass cage, um, it's not as loud, but it is a nice kind of soothing uh, call. So, yeah. What is it? Hmm. Of a, just a leaf that's fallen off. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I just got this glass top. Um, I take it off every day. Um, I'm not really worried about them taking up too much oxygen because there is a lot of plants in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a really simple setup. Probably cost me like ten dollars in total to set up that tank just because I took cuttings from plants I had lying around and seeds and just threw them in there. Kind of took off. So yeah, um, there's a hat rack that I built. I got a lot of hats and glasses and gloves that I collect as well. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of just the room tour. Um, uh, let me go what other st kind of stuff you guys would be interested in. Um, I definitely want to do a um, animal room tour that I have out in the shop. It's got a lot more animals, and it's got the 300-gallon uh, turtle pond in there. Um, just reached 300 subscribers, so I'm going to be doing a 300-subscriber uh Wait, 400 subscribers, sorry. 400 subscribers special um, sometime soon. Uh, so uh, let me know if you guys would be interested in that. I'm thinking uh, something like getting a new animal to celebrate and uh, let you guys pick the name. Uh, let me know if you'd be interested. So, yeah, peace.